Hi, my name is Rachel Rabin, and I'm an assistant professor at McGill University. I'm also a research scientist at the Douglas Research Center, and my research focuses on cannabis use, on cognition and brain health, both in psychiatric and non-psychiatric populations. So cannabis use is really prevalent among youth and adolescents. About 20% of youth and adolescents use cannabis, not just occasionally, but actually frequently. And one of the big problems with cannabis legalization is not only that rates and use uh, consumption has gone up, but also that a lot of adolescents and youth think that cannabis is risk-free, that it's benign. And a lot of education needs to be broadcasted, explaining and educating this age group that cannabis use does, does contain some risks and that everybody should be knowledgeable about these risks so that they can make informed decisions about if they use cannabis and, and how much. So adolescence is a common time that people experiment with drugs. And one of the reasons behind this that not many people know about, but coming from a, a neuroscience background, is that the prefrontal cortex, which is the frontal region of our brain, is actually underdeveloped. And it's the last brain region to develop. And this underdeveloped prefrontal cortex actually makes adolescents um, be risk takers, have impulsive behavior, be sensation seeking or novelty seeking. And that's why we see a lot of elevated or experimenting with drugs in this age group. And the, the important thing to remember is that adolescence is a time when the brain undergoes lots of development. So there is pruning of the gray matter volume, which actually means that we actually decrease our gray matter volume during adolescence. And the reason we do that is where the brain is actually becoming more efficient. So it's getting rid of unnecessary connections and making more important connections more salient. So because the brain undergoes so much development during adolescence, it makes, um, the, um, it makes experimenting with drugs really dangerous. In fact, using cannabis during adolescence is way more dangerous than using during adulthood when the brain is fully developed. So what happens when we introduce cannabis into an adolescent brain during development is that it actually alters the trajectory of normal development. And people may be asking, well, is cannabis use more dangerous than other substances of abuse? Because we know that you know, nicotine use and alcohol use are also very common during adolescence. But what's key to remember about cannabis use is that it acts on cannabinoid receptors in the brain, and it actually interferes with endocannabinoid sing signaling. And this is really important because this is the system that's really the key mediator of neurodevelopment. So when we sort of mess or interfere with endocannabinoid functioning, we really do change the way that the brain should be developing. So cannabis does have uh, an association with cognitive function. And when we talk about cognition, there's two different aspects that we sort of have to differentiate between. So cannabis can have acute effects or acute cannabis use can have effects on cognition and then there can be chronic effects. So when we talk about acute effects, we're talking about effects that occur when someone is actually intoxicated or they're under the influence of cannabis. And these effects tend to be transient, short-lived, and they usually dissipate between one and you know, three hours or so. And it is very consistently and well-established that acute cannabis use does negatively influence cognition. So when people are you know, high or under the influence of cannabis, They'll notice um, you know, poor memory, they'll have trouble focusing, they'll have trouble concentrating, their decision-making may you know, be altered. Uh, so they may actually make you know, not very smart, I guess, decisions. And that's sometimes why we see like people under the influence of cannabis will get behind the wheel and drive. And we are seeing um, with legalization actually an increased rate in cannabis-related driving accidents. Um, but what I'm going to talk about more more about today is the chronic effects. And these effects um, are, when we talk about chronic effects, we talk about effects that are permanent or long lasting after the acute effects of cannabis have dissipated. 
So when we talk about the chronic effects of cannabis on cognition, there are a couple factors that, you know, make this uh, association even stronger. So the more one uses, so the more frequently and um, the actual consumption of cannabis that one consumes will actually have a greater effect and produce more severe impairments. And what the literature also says is that the earlier one uses, so if someone uses, you know, at 19 uh, versus 14, the person who's using earlier will actually have more impairment and they'll have greater magnitudes of deficits than, than using at a, a later age. So both dose and age of onset play a huge role in the magnitude of cognitive impairment. So one interesting focus um, that people have looked at is what is sort of underlying these cognitive deficits. And we know that these cognitive deficits have been correlated with decreased gray matter volume in the brain. And so we know that regions of the brain that have high amounts of cannabinoid receptors are the regions that actually show this decrease. So one such reason is, region is the prefrontal cortex, which I mentioned before. And another region is the hippocampus. And this region is responsible for people's memory. And the prefrontal cortex, like I was mentioning before, is important for people's executive function and also plays a role in attention. So these are the cognitive domains that we see most affected in cannabis users. And we actually see correlations between the amount of cannabis one has used and the a decrease or lower gray matter volume in these, in these regions. So I also just wanna mention that most of these studies that have been done are correlational, which means they're only done at one time point. And why this is important is because that they really speak to the association between cannabis and gray matter volume and cognition, but not causation. So with these studies, we can't actually say that cannabis is causing cognitive deficits or that cannabis is causing a decrease in gray matter volume. Uh, it is possible that these deficits actually predate cannabis use and may make people more vulnerable to using cannabis. So for example, someone with, you know, poor memory or poor executive function uh, may be more likely to use cannabis. And the same would go for a gray matter volume. So someone with lower hippocampal volume may be more likely to use cannabis. However, when we do show correlations between amount of use and uh, these outcomes, it does tend to support more of a causal relationship uh, than, than association. So there is a lot of literature supporting a relationship between cannabis use and the later development of psychosis and schizophrenia. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. So one of the things that I just found really interesting and I wanted to just share it with people is because not everybody makes this connection, but when uh, non-psychiatric controls use cannabis, the acute effects are actually very similar to some of the symptoms of schizophrenia. So those can include things like paranoia, like paranoid thinking, cognitive deficits, which I just spoke about, hallucinations and delusions. So when we think about the pathophysiology of psychosis and schizophrenia, it, it makes sense that cannabis use may be involved. So there's been about like nine or 10 large epidemiological studies that support this association between early cannabis use and the later development of, of schizophrenia. And these studies have been conducted in many different countries um, and at many different time points in the last 20 years. So it, it really does support that this is not, you know, a cultural phenomenon. It, it really is something that is happening all around the world. And um, what's important to know is that cannabis use does not cause schizophrenia. It's, it's merely a risk factor. And so, you know, people have often said, okay, with cannabis use increasing, you know, will we see this increase in psychosis and increase in schizophrenia? And the answer is no, that actually the rates should stay the same. And they're about, you know, anywhere between 1% for schizophrenia and about 4% uh, for, schiz for uh, psychosis. And the reason that these rates aren't increasing is because, like I said before, cannabis does not cause schizophrenia or psychosis. So what we think is going on is that there's another vulnerability factor. And this vulnerability factor can be 
a genetic predisposition. So it could be, you know, if someone has schizophrenia among family members, it could be a, a predisposition that happened during development. So, you know, there's, there's other risk factors um, that can happen in utero or with really early like brain insult during development. And then cannabis sort of acts as this trigger later in life. And then there's actually like even more of a delay about two years after cannabis use starts that we actually start seeing the onset of uh, psychosis. So th the other important thing to remember is like I mentioned before, dose um, also plays a really important factor in whether or not someone may develop psychosis or schizophrenia. So the amount one is using is actually really important as well as the timing. And so early onset use is, is thought to be a risk factor to, to increase, to further increase the chances of developing psychosis and, um, and schizophrenia. And I just want to come back to the idea about dose for a minute, because um, it's actually becoming more relevant because tea, because of cannabis is actually becoming more potent. And when I talk about more potent, I'm talking about uh, the amount of THC that's in cannabis. And so THC is, is the primary psychoactive ingredient in cannabis, and it's responsible for most of the negative effects that I mentioned today. So on cognition and paranoia, hallucinations, and it's this ingredient that's been linked to the development of psychosis and, and schizophrenia. So one interesting fact is that um, in the 60s, THC levels were about 3%. And today we're seeing THC at levels as high as 20%. And so the greater potency and the greater concentrations of THC have actually translated to a greater increase um, in the risk of developing psychosis and schizophrenia. So all the negative effects that I spoke about today, like cognition and lower gray matter volume, um, as well as the development of psychosis and schizophrenia, uh, I just want to emphasize that, that these problems or impairments don't necessarily happen in, in every adolescent or youth that uses cannabis. The problem is, is that we actually don't know who or which cannabis user will actually develop these problems. And so at this stage, I think the, the recommendation should be that people, you know, are informed about the risks of cannabis use and that it, it's discouraged among youth and adolescents. And until we can really be able to identify who these risky users are, I think that the, the, the mature and the, um, you know, the best thing to do for, for this growing uh, population of cannabis users is just to, to, re to really discourage um, early cannabis use among youth and adolescents.